Welcome to the 412 Canada podcast. Thanks for joining us. My name is Kim Hutchins at 412. We're equipping the church for greater influence through serving. 412 is a ministry of Faith Baptist Church in Huntsville, Ontario. We're so excited to be able to continue to equip you through our podcast and YouTube. Today, I'm happy to have Steve Lensing joining us. Steve is a producer and musician whose projects have been nominated and have won Canadian Gospel Music Awards and Juno Awards. He was named Producer of the Year at the Canadian Gospel Music Awards in 2020. And in this episode, we're going to chat about changing from touring full-time to producing and mixing. Also, about our calling. Welcome, Steve. Thank you. Thanks for having me. This is great. Yeah, uh, I'm so excited. Yeah, it feels like for like for me, like the first time I've left the house in like a good couple of weeks. Yeah. So this is especially exciting. But yeah, no, thanks for having me. It's yeah, great. Yeah, this is so great. It's nice to be able to chat with you in person. Yes. Yeah, the last time was Zoom, right? You it was, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, and we talked about donuts. You were making donuts last time. Right, yeah, I'm off <laughs> Something the... New. Yeah, I, I think like a lot of people, like the, what do they call it, quarantine 15 or yes. whatever. Yeah. Uh, so I'm off off the donut thing now I've been trying to like uh, garden like so I've been okay. prepping for the for the vegetable garden this summer because that's Ooh. really healthy so yeah. have, our house is being overtaken by plants I haven't moved them outside yet so it, they take up a lot of space inside don't they and I think I went yeah. too early inside oh, right no. so then they've been growing for like a month and a half <laughs> oh, now no. and yeah, yeah it's a bit yeah. A bit crazy, but yeah. Don't feel bad. I did that last year. I jumped okay. the gun, and then right. they were all inside. And then I planted too early outside. They all died, and then oh, I had to start, start again. Start from scratch. <laughs> yeah, I, I think I'm safe <laughs> now to go outside, but yeah, it feels oh. like the house is like a greenhouse because there's stuff yeah. everywhere, but yeah. it's great. Yeah, I'm excited. Good. And so anything new coming up um, this year? Lots of things have changed, right? Yeah, lots of things, yeah, have changed uh, for us, for my wife and I, yeah. uh, like work-wise, but then also life-wise. We had our first uh, kid three months ago. We have a daughter, Yay. Shiloh. So, yeah. yeah, everything, like, else in life feels kind of, like, eclipsed <laughs> by that because yeah. it's, like, yeah, all-consuming, right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, mm -hmm. no, so it's it's been great. We're having a great time, and, yeah, yeah. it's really good. Oh, that's so good. Yeah. Okay, well, let's jump in and let's get talking about production and for those of serving in production. Now, when you were on our podcast before, I know that our own people here for, that serve in production found it really encouraging mm. and helpful. And so I just wanted to talk some more about that change, right, from touring to switching to production and, and get into that. Yeah, it's been, uh, I talked about this a bit on the when we were chatting on the podcast, but it's been a, an interesting year. So my wife, Brooke, and I, uh, before the pandemic, we were uh, doing traveling ministry full time, so touring, and and even before Brooke and I were traveling together uh, and doing music, I was working for another band uh, for years before that. So it feels like for the last like ten years, I've been doing music full time, <laughs> like traveling, and um, yeah, felt like uh, that was really what I was supposed to be doing. Like yeah. uh, I struggled a lot. After high school, like went to a bunch of different colleges and universities, had no idea what I was doing, and then uh, found touring and music, and I was like, "Oh, this is it! I get it! Like yeah. this is what I'm supposed to be doing." And then fast forward to last year, the pandemic hits, and then obviously no touring, <laughs> and so it's been a big change for us, right? Of yeah. like now, now what do we do? Both in terms of like how do we pay our bills, yeah. but like how are we spending our time? What are we doing? And so. Uh, yeah, for the last year, I've been mainly doing production stuff. Uh, so I have uh, a little studio near our house, and mm -hmm. I'm doing mixing and mastering and production for artists and churches and that kind of thing. So that's kept me busy for uh, the last, yeah, the better part of the last year. Well, I'm really, that'd be full time, right? Like, that's yeah. been so intense this past year. Yeah, it's <laughs> for, for sure. It's all of a sudden, like... <laughs> Yeah, what used to be like a, a hobby for me has become like really, yeah, full time, like you said, because uh, there's a lot of artists who are sitting at home and writing and like, yeah. oh, I should record right now. I should use this time. But then also like for churches and ministries, right, like there's all yeah. of a sudden now this, f f this, they've been forced to go online and make things virtual. And so, yeah, mixing is like a whole big thing, post-production and all that. So, oh my God. yeah, it's been busy, but... Uh, and, and really good. I'm thankful that, yeah, I was able to pivot and, like, 
have all this other stuff to do and so it's been great yeah yeah, yeah. that's good and what blessings have you found have come out of this different time in this switch <laughs> yeah it's it's uh well like like I was just saying like first of all like the, the primary blessing has been like that we I can keep working and mm -hmm. like that God has just provided like the the phone never stops ringing which is amazing like yeah. just thankful for that that we can like yeah pay our bills and and like keep uh doing what we're doing uh that's been like an unbelievable blessing mm -hmm. and then too I was thinking about this this week because I was working on a project uh uh, for a ministry close to us in Toronto. And I was thinking about how a year ago, I, I probably would have been in the band for that. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I'm like not, right? Like I'm behind yeah. the scenes and doing the mixing. And uh, for a split second, I was like, oh, that's really sad. Like I wish mm -hmm. I was playing, right? Like I love to play. Uh, but then, yeah, I just felt this real sense of peace of like, this is like a new way for me to fit in the puzzle to like contribute and that's been a real blessing too to see like that uh yeah it wasn't specifically like i do this one thing like i am a guitar player so that's what i do that's all i do yeah. but that there's like other ways for me to serve and contribute and be a part of the whole big picture and so that's been a real blessing too to like yeah just be reminded that like i don't i don't have to only think about things one way so mm -hmm. that's been it's been a big blessing for sure yeah, yeah. Well, I wanted to talk with you about your calling, right? And it's such a, we've talked a little bit about it, but yes. I know in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, and he talks about living life worthy of your calling because you've right. been called by God. Yes. And uh, so I know uh, we've talked, and it's not necessarily just what you do, but who you are. Right. Right? And let's talk a little bit about that. Yeah, that's great. Uh, I have a friend who, uh, he was a pastor at our church. Uh, interestingly, now he's a police officer. Uh, okay. Which is interesting That's kind of that he was the one that taught me this. But <laughs> I remember he, I heard him give a message one time talking about primary calling and secondary calling. Okay. And, and our secondary calling is the thing that we spend our time doing, our job or our vocation, you know, how mm -hmm. we spend our hours in a day. But our primary calling for those of us who follow Christ and call ourselves Christians, our primary calling is you know, living life as Jesus wants us to live, loving our neighbor, using our spiritual gifts to edify the church. Those kind of things are our primary calling, right? Mm -hmm. Where, you know, how we spend our time, whether I'm playing guitar or I'm mixing or I'm working a job at Pure Later, that's secondary, right? Like yeah. that, um, that the thing I should be most concerned about with my calling is how I'm interacting with the people around me sharing the message of Christ, that kind of thing. Yeah. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah. yeah. No, that's and so, good. <laughs> sorry. Keep and going. to yeah. just bring it back around, like that's been a big thing for me this year because, um, yeah, like I think for a while there I thought like I am a musician and that's yeah. what I, that is what I'm called to do. Like I just play guitar and like, but that's actually not true. Like I've spent the last year really not playing guitar and mm -hmm. like I still get to live out my calling. And so that's been a really healthy reminder for me that like, yeah, my calling and my value and my worth, all that kind of stuff, it's mm -hmm. not necessarily tied to what I'm doing with my hands. It's mm -hmm. tied to, yeah, how I'm living, how I'm following Christ, how I'm serving the church, that kind of thing. Yeah, and so someone who's joining us, how do you think that they could go about kind of discovering what they're called to do? Right. right? Yeah, that's a great question. <laughs> I, th I think it's probably like a lifetime of learning. Yeah. I feel like I'm still, uh, still learning that stuff. But I think... Um, yeah, to think about the things that we're doing, whether we're volunteering at the church, as secondary to how we live our lives. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I think spiritual gifts are a big part of that. So mm -hmm. I have the spiritual gift of administration, and that looks like helping to helping somebody accomplish a vision for a mission. Uh, and it doesn't necessarily mean it has to be playing guitar with my wife, you know, and helping her accomplish that. It can be mixing and helping somebody accomplish a thing that way yeah. and so like using my spiritual gift doesn't have to look a specific way it can be lots of different things so I think spiritual gifts are a great way to start like start to learn about yeah how am I called to use these gifts to, to build up the church and to to bless people and so that's a big thing but then yeah just how do I love my neighbor how do I yeah. love people how do I live a life sharing the love of Christ mm -hmm. think about that as opposed to thinking about what am I doing with my time? Because I think that's a big thing uh, in church world too, right? Like we look at 
uh, certain things like the worship leader on stage as mm -hmm. an elevated way of serving. That's right? true, like, right? It's I like, oh, that's on stage. it. Yeah and, yeah, and that for me, for sure, like, I want to be on stage because that's what I do. I'm a guitar player. Yeah. But, like, actually, that's not the most important thing. What they're doing is not, as long as, you know, they're focused on their primary calling, they're mm -hmm. living their life following Christ, they're serving, they're using their gifts. That's the most important thing. So, yeah, I would say spiritual gifts though, have been a big thing for me in the last five years of learning to, to find my primary calling. Mm -hmm. Spiritual gifts have been a great way to exercise that for sure. So, yeah. yeah. And what is one verse that really encourages you? Good, yeah. <laughs> I, I was saying to you before we started yeah. that like I've been trying to memorize scripture more this year. Yeah, that was a and good s chat. <laughs> so I have, it, I have it as a screenshot on my background here yeah. on my phone. Because, Which is such a good tip for anybody who's joining us yeah. to do that, right? Yeah, and I, then you I see it. I feel like, like as we get like quicker access to scripture, like with the Bible on our phones, like we're not committing it to memory as much. Yeah. And uh, I think that's a really important thing that maybe our generation has missed. Um, I think about my grandfather, like he can recall so much scripture just from memory. And I'm like, oh, I want that. So anyways, I've yeah. been trying to memorize more scripture. And so I've been putting in screenshots on my background. And this one has been really encouraging for me the last year. So this mm -hmm. is Isaiah 40, 28. Do you not know, have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He will not grow tired or weary. And this is my favorite part. And his understanding no one can fathom. Mm. Uh, and so, yeah, I've been uh, reading a lot about, yeah, anxiety and stress. Like, I'm a stressed out person in general, and especially the last year, right? <laughs> yeah. So I've been trying to, to focus my scripture reading on, yeah, uh, trusting God and understanding. And I love that mm -hmm. last part, his understanding no one can fathom. Like, yeah. that God sees what's been happening in this last year, all this change, all this different stuff. Uh, and he's not surprised by any of it, right? Like, and mm -hmm. he's not confused by any of it. He has an understanding of this whole thing that, like, none of us can fathom. And so we can take comfort in that, right? Like, all mm -hmm. of this change, whether things come back to normal or whatever new normal is, like, yeah, God's got it under control, and, like, we can trust him because we can't really understand what he's doing. And right. we'll understand it one day, but, uh, yeah, I don't know. That's been a great comfort to me. Yeah, no, that's yeah. great. That's fantastic. And so hopefully next time I come, I won't have to look You'll have it phone. memorized, yeah. right? <laughs> Hopefully. I'm trying. Right. I'll quiz you now. Yeah, right. <laughs> Please kidding. keep me accountable. I need that. I need it. Oh. Well, I'm just thinking about all of our volunteers that serve in the local church or those that lead volunteers. What is mm. one thing you could encourage them right now, especially those that are serving in production? Mm. Um, and it's been such a heavy year. Yes. Um, what's something you could say to encourage them? Yeah, that's a good question. <laughs> I think uh, I said this on the podcast, but if people missed it, um, I would just want to encourage people that like the work that we're doing and as somebody who has spent the last year working behind the scenes as opposed to being like in front of the camera, yeah. um, that work is really valuable. Even though it seems like, you know, I spend a lot of time in my studio and I never interact with people and I just mix and mix and mix. Yeah. And so that was one of the things I said on the podcast was that work is really valuable. It's reaching people. It's important uh, and it's blessing people. But then I think for people serving in the church um, now, like uh, I would just encourage people to, um, yeah, that primary calling thing, to look for opportunities to exercise their primary calling and think less about, well, I'm a sound guy, so this is what I do, or I'm a guitar player, so this is what I do. And even outside of the church, how are we, uh, how are we operating in our primary calling of loving our neighbor, serving mm -hmm. each other? Um, and yeah, let's think outside the box a little bit. This year has forced us to do that to yes. some degree on our own, yeah. uh, to think outside the box, but <laughs> let's be creative. Like there's opportunity now to serve in different ways that we wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. So, and I think that's exciting too, that like, you know, for me, especially like serving in one way for so long, mm -hmm. uh, it's exciting now. It's a, it took a bit of an adjustment, but it's exci exciting now to do something new. Yeah. And so, yeah, let's try new things. Let's serve in new ways. And let's get excited about serving again. I yeah. Think, yeah. That's awesome, Steve. Thank you so much. Great. I think yeah. that's so encouraging. And I love seeing how you've pivoted and you've changed and you're still serving. Yeah. And I hope that that's encouraging to all of those that are joining us, that they would yes. be encouraged to even try something different. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I, I don't mean like maybe don't, like if you've never done sound before, don't volunteer yeah. for like, you know, within a reason. Yeah. But no, 
it's been uh, yeah, it's been a wild year, lots of change, but I am really thankful. It's yeah. been a big blessing. And I'm, I'm thankful for opportunities to still serve. That's awesome. great. Awesome. Yeah. That's great. Well, thanks great. for coming. Thanks for having me. It's awesome. <laughs> Appreciate it. Well, for those joining us, I hope that you've been encouraged by Steve. If you would like to contact him, we'll have a link available on our show notes. So if you're listening to the audio version of the podcast, remember to subscribe on your podcast app. And for those watching the video edition, subscribe to our YouTube channel so that you don't miss an episode. Also, Hop onto the discussion by following us on social media. You can find us on Instagram at 412Canada. Looking forward to next time. Thanks for joining us.